Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Suraj Estate Developers Limited Q4 FI24 Earnings Conference Call. This conference call may contain forward-looking statements about the company which are based on beliefs, opinions and expectations of the company as on the date of this call. These statements are not the guarantees of future performance and involve risks and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touch tone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Rahul Thomas, whole time director. Thank you and over to you, sir. Good morning and I welcome everyone to our Q4 FY24 earnings conference call. Along with me, we have our CFO, Mr. Shripal Shah and SGA, our Investor Relation Advisors. I hope all of you have gone through our investor presentation uploaded on the exchange and our company website. Since this is our maiden call, I would like to give a brief overview of our company and the industry, followed by a review of the financial performance of the company during the quarter and the year ended March 24. Suraj Estate has been actively involved in the real estate business since 1986 specializing in the development of real estate across the residential and commercial sectors in South Central Mumbai region. The residential portfolio is strategically located in the markets of Mahim, Dadar, Prabhadevi and Parel, which are sub-markets of South Central Mumbai, where we have established a significant presence. We are now expanding our footprint into the residential real estate development in the Bandra sub-market. Our focus lies on value luxury, which is one and two BHK compact homes in prime locations of the city. The second being the luxury segment, which caters to the clientele up to two, three, four BHKs, including duplex and penthouses. And the commercial segment, which is built to suit commercial offices. Our expertise lies in the redevelopment of tenanted properties under DCR 33.7 and society redevelopment under 33.7b of the DCPR 2034. Given that most land parcels in the South Central Mumbai market are redevelopment projects, the core competence of our company lies in tenant settlement, a crucial element for unlocking value on such land parcels. The company identifies cessed or non cessed properties with uh, existing tenants, ties up with the landlords of such tenanted properties by entered in, entering into a development agreement or an outright purchase through a conveyance deed. Since incorporation, we have successfully completed 42 projects with a developed area of more than 10 lakh square feet in South Central Mumbai region. We have also developed custom spaces for leading institutions including National Stock Exchange of India, ICICI Bank, Saraswat Bank, Union Bank of India and Clearing Corporation of India Limited. In addition to the completed projects, there are currently 13 ongoing projects with a developable area of more than 20 lakh square feet and a saleable rara carpet of more than 6 lakh square feet, corresponding to a sold and unsold value of 1350 crores in the ongoing portfolio. Furthermore, there are 18 upcoming projects pipeline already acquired by the company, approximately of a carpet area of 9 lakh square feet. To discuss further on the market opportunity, talking about the MMR region, it stands as the India's second largest real estate market. From 2018 to 2023, absorption in the MMR surged at the rate of 14% annually, propelled by several factors, such as rise in disposable incomes and household savings, a growing preference for higher quality residences and larger living spaces, a reverse migration trend triggered by the lifting of COVID-related restrictions and the return to office mandate, along with the urbanization. This heightened absorption stimulated a healthy return increase of 15.2% in the supply during the same period. As of December 23, inventory levels dropped to 13 months low from 30 months in December 2018, primarily due to the robust absorption rates in the recent quarters. Concurrently, pricing experienced a 5.2 compounded annual growth rate over the mentioned period, attributed to a shift towards superior quality, branded offerings, and a diminished inventory levels. Talking about the quarter and the year that went by, the residential real estate market in India soared in Q1 of calendar year 2024, fueled by persistent high demand. 
High end and luxury segment led the charge while the mid range maintained its dominance in launches. With the infrastructure boom, improved connectivity, and a notable, a notable 18% year on year absorption rate increase, there's a 31% year on year drop in unsold inventory, presenting a growth opportunity for industry players like us. We anticipate that the demand growth in the MM, uh, MMR region will persist. The, project, the projection is based on factors such as enhanced affordability, potential reversals in interest rate hikes, a rise in double income household led by young working professionals and an ongoing improvement in infrastructure. To dwell a bit on the South Central Mumbai market, in the areas of Mahi, Matunga, Dadar, Prabhadevi and Parel, the micro markets we enjoy, 8% share in all redevelopments in this, in this South Central Mumbai market. SEM stands out as one of the, of the robust markets within the MMR region, owing to various factors. Firstly, the area boasts of significant presence of high income individuals and affluent customer base. Secondly, it is known for its premium and super premium positioning in the real estate sector. Thirdly, the trend of nuclear families is prevalent, further contributing to its appeal. Lastly, it serves as a prime micro market for families seeking to upgrade their residential accommodations. Even amidst the recent launches of new projects in the SCM market, we have successfully moved our inventory by leveraging our extensive range of offerings across various budget segments, coupled with our adaptness in pinpointing the ideal product market alignment. A notable characteristic of the SCM market is the limited availability of vacant land parcels. Therefore, any developer seeking to enhance its footprint in the SCM must opt for redevelopment. This is precisely our area of expertise. Drawing upon our extensive experience in redevelopment, we have honed the knowledge and adopted the best practices necessary to revitalize stand buildings efficiently and cost effectively. This proficiency has propelled us to leadership position within this micro market. We are focused largely on identifying properties under DCR 337, which offers multiple benefits such as FSI 3 on, on us getting the Mahara NOC, without any TDR or additional costs, relatively low approval cost, and typical discount of approximately 30% on the land cost. Unlocking value through our tenant settlement, which has been our expertise, effective tenant settlement stands at, as a pivotal aspect of our redevelopment endeavors. With a proven track record out of 42 projects we've undertaken, we rehoused more than 1,011 1, tenants free of cost and reconstructing their residences without any financial burden. Although the minimum threshold for tenant approval and consent stands at 51%, our brand reputation, commitment to quality development and punctual delivery have consistently garnered a near unanimous support securing near 200% approvals for most of our projects. There are more than 19,000 test properties in the island city of Mumbai, which are 50 years old and above, and out of which 16,000 of these buildings are in an urgent need of redevelopment, indicating a huge untapped post potential. Further, there's a huge scope of society redevelopment under DCR 337B, which also falls under our expertise. A few material updates for the quarter. During the quarter, under review, we have successfully reached an amicable resolution in a pending litigation with OLV and OLPS Society, which represents a significant positive outcome for us. As per the agreed terms, we have, we have commitment to a payment of approximately 47 crores to the landowner, along with the provision of additional flats measuring 35,500 square feet to the OLV and OLPS society. This settlement leaves us with a built up area of more than 10,800 meters, including fungible FSI for sale, equating to a GDV of 350 crores. Additionally, we have secured development rights of a land component spanning over 4,790 meters including five existing buildings, which comprises of rehousing of 108 tenants stroke occupants. The estimated FSI required for rehousing these occupants is 6,680 meters, leaving us with a balanced built up area for sale of at least 6,460 meters with a GDV of approximately 225 after surplus areas handed over to Mada. This favorable resolution represents a significant milestone for our company reaffirming our commitment to excellence in the real estate sector and providing us with a sales potential of 350 crores. In line with our business expansion strategy, we have also acquired a freehold land 
at measuring 1073 square meters of LJ Road, Mahim West, Mumbai. This redevelopment project involves seven tenant stroke occupants who have vacated their premises, rendering the plot vacant. After accounting for the FSI required for rehabilitating these tenant stroke occupants and the surplus area to be handed over to MADA, the estimated balance carpet area is approximately 30,000 square feet with a GDV of 120 crores. During the year under review, we have successfully launched new value luxury stroke luxury project called Lumina, Suraj Lumina at Visavakar Road, Mahim West. The said project lies under Regulation 33.7 of the DCPR. The project complies of 35 units, including both 2 BHK uh, uh, with a carpet area ranging from 575 to 622 and 3 BHKs with a carpet area of 882 square feet with a total carpet area of 22,376. The GDV estimate from this project is close to 100 crores. The project is expected to be completed by December 28. Just to give you a perspective of our ongoing projects, out of the six lakh square feet, we have uh, out of the six lakh square feet, we have already sold 4.89 lakh square feet, and have collected 1,171 crores, with a balance receivable of 719 crores to be collected. The unsold inventory of 1.21 lakh square feet from the ongoing projects have an estimated GDV of approximately 631 crores. The sold and unsold receivables uh, totaling to 1350 from the ongoing is expected to flow from FY25 to FY29. We have 18 upcoming projects with an estimated carpet area of more than 9 lakh square feet. 67% of this comprises of value luxury projects. 21% belongs to the value luxury and the luxury projects and the balance 12% is the commercial segment for sale. The estimated carpet area for sale from these upcoming projects is estimated at 9 lakh square feet. We estimate a price of 50 to 55,000 per square foot on this portfolio. We plan to launch, launch seven new projects with a carpet area of 2.66 lakh square feet with a total GDV of 1,150 crores for the, FY, for the financial year 24-25. Our focus continues in enhancing our market position in South Central Mumbai, pursuing our differential product offerings in our value luxury segment, expanding our land reserves in the SCM and other MMR regions, selectively developing commercial projects in the SCM region, redeveloping projects through the asset light model. With a favorable economic landscape, we have strategically positioned ourselves to capitalize on the, the burgeoning opportunities at Suraj, our dedication lies in delivering world-class luxury projects that surpass expectations. With a proven history of delivering top-tier projects, we are primed for an ongoing success and expansion within the real estate sector. With this, I would like to hand over the call to our CFO, who will run you through the financial highlights. Thank you. Thank you, Rav. Uh, good morning, everybody. I will now run you through the financial highlights of the year ended March 2024. On the operational front in FY24, in the residential segment, we have achieved pre-sales of 1,7136 square feet versus 1,3044 square feet in FY23, translating to a sales value of rupees four, approximately 483 crores versus rupees 437 crore in FY23, indicating year-over-year -year growth of 10.5% in a residential segment. Further, in FY24, there was no pre-sales in the commercial segment versus Rs. 197 crore in the FY23. Collections for FY24 stood at 316 crores versus Rs. 346 crores in FY23. Focus during the year was on selling luxury projects, which reflects in the improved realization of Rs. 45,074 per square feet in FY24 versus Rs. 42,420 square feet per square feet in FY23. Talking about the financial performance, the total income for FY24 grew by 35% to 415.7 crores versus rupees 307.9 crores in FY23. EBITDA for FY24 grew by 54.3% to rupees 236.4 crores versus rupees 153.2 crores in the FY23. Operating margins stood at 56.9% versus 49.39% in FY23, 
which is an increase of 710 basis points over the previous year. Now, PAT uh, uh, for the year stood at 67.5 crores versus rupees 32.06 crores in FY25, 24, a growth of almost 111% uh, year on year. During the year, we have repaid high cost debt to the tune of 285 crores from the IPO proceeds in the month of December 2023. Using and further additional 23.5 crores of unsecured loan was repaid from the gross collection proceeds. Our net debt as on March 24 stands at rupees 315 crore versus rupees 565 crore in the previous financial year, March 23. With this, uh, I would like to open the floor for questions. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Participants present on the audio bridge who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touch tone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, please, you may press star and two. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We have our first question from the line of Krish S. Bhatia from Anandrathi. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, good morning, sir. Uh, and thanks for being a question. Just one question from my side. Uh, what is the update on the Bandra project and when do you intend to close these? Hi. Uh, yeah, so it, with regards to Bandra, we've already received our concession approvals from the Municipal Commissioner for the first phase. However, since we are planning to amalgamate a few more plots, we plan to launch this later in the year FY24-25. So it'll be towards the end of the year or early next year. Thank okay, you. thank you. And all the best. Thank you, sir. We have our next question from the line of Amit Agarwal from Nuwama Wealth. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, thanks for taking the question. Uh, what I heard was the collections this year on a year-on-year -year basis uh, were lower. So can you give a, uh, you know, reasons for that? Why were the collections lower? So the collections are in line with the, uh, last year we had done two uh, transactions in the commercial segment, which was 197 crores, which uh, this year is not there. So slightly a dip is there on, uh, on in regards to the collection for the com com commercial segment. And uh, is that the reason why the operating cash flow is also only 9 crores as against 188 crores and 23? So the operating cash flow uh, was because a lot of expenditure uh, was incurred on the project this year. So a lot of projects are at advanced stages of construction. So material amount of money went into uh, development of the project and also uh, we have infused some money towards the upcoming projects like uh, the settlement of dispute from uh, the Marinagar plot which we already some utilized some money there. And uh, two of our projects, Ocean Star and Pallet, we got uh, full potential approval uh, f f up to Pallet up to 50 storey and uh, Ocean Star up to 42 storey. So some amount of capital has gone into the approval cost and other construction related costs which are for the of uh, our 13 projects. Okay, sure. Uh, that's all for my side. We'll come back later. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We have our next question from the line of Anand Murda. Mundra from My Temple Capital. Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah. Good morning, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. So my first question is, so what would be our revenue and EBITDA margin guidance for this year uh, and the pre-sales guidance as well for FY25? With regards to the pre-sales, uh, we're targeting a pre-sales of 850 crores for the financial year 24-25. And uh, Last to your question on the margins, I think our margins will be intact since as uh, lands are already acquired by the group, so our margins will be intact for the upcoming projects. Okay. Uh, answer anything on the revenue number? On the sales part, we are expecting uh, to close sales in the range of 500 to 525 crores for FI25. Okay. This is a sales uh, rec recognized. And sir, in the pre-sales, what would be the breakup between commercial and uh, residential? So, uh, 
we are targeting uh, pre-sales of 850 crores in FY25, of which we are expecting uh, 200 crores from commercial segment, and balance 650 would come from the residential segment. Okay, and the commercial segment also has similar margins as compared to the residential segment? Yes, uh, more or less the margin, margins are same. Okay, okay. Uh, and sir, it out of the, the residential, because uh, the, the specially the commercial segment, which the land which we have bought is a vacant land, where the land cost is huge, as compared to the redevelopment projects. So, more than the segment, it is more of the nature of uh, project which we have acquired. Okay, okay. Uh, and sir, out of the current uh, gross debt that we have, how much of the debt would be high cost debt? That would be say around 17-18%. So presently, around 80 to 90 crores is high cost debt. Out of the total gross debt? Uh, yes. And and at every point on uh, point of time in our balance sheet, we'll have this high cost debt uh, always because we'll be executing a lot of projects. So will this always be there on the balance sheet? No, these high cost debt were taken for the land acquisition stage. So which we, will not continue. A portion will always be there because we need money for the growth capital. So uh, some certain portion would be there, uh, but otherwise we are having uh, interest rates in the range of 10% to 12% range, which we have recently got. So over a period of time, we we propose to reduce the construction call, uh, construction funding. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, Hello. please be patient. We have the management flying disconnected. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for patiently waiting. We have the management line back with us. Please go ahead. Thank over to you, sir. Hi, thank you. Uh, I think the call got uh, disconnected. We are happy to continue with the questions. Yeah. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, a reminder: you may press star and one to ask questions. We have our next question from the line of Ritwik Seth from one of financials. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Uh, good morning, sir. Uh, so, a few questions from my end. Uh, so, firstly, uh, what kind of launches are we looking to uh, do in FY25? Uh, we expect to launch seven new projects uh, as, as discussed on the call. We have a total GDV of 1,150 crores, which will be coming out of these new launches. Hmm. Uh, that is, and this will be spread across uh, seven projects. Okay, so all this will be launched in FY25. Yeah, 2425. Yes. Okay, great. And uh, are we looking uh, to uh, start our BD uh, journey, like you know, uh, kickstart our BD journey in a big way? You know, what kind of uh, BD can we expect in FI 25, 26? And yeah. So, uh, like I said earlier, we've already actually acquired one in the recent quarter. So we that is a continuous process. But having said that, uh, to to get what you know to launch what we already have. Having said that, in Bandra, there would be uh, a few more uh, business development proposals which we would be analyzing. So that would be our focus, uh, which, you know, projects which are close to our current projects where you can just amalgamate and increase the potential. So that would be the immediate goal. Okay, okay, got it. So, so okay, and, and what kind of uh, 
uh, you know, money, uh, capital we are looking to deploy in the business development side? If uh, if it's a society redevelopment, uh, there's no upfront land cost, so it would be more from an asset light model. So I think that's what would be our main focus area right now. Right. Like, can we expect to deploy 150, 200 crores on an annual basis uh, given our current, uh, you know, uh, sale, pre-sales run rate and uh, cash flow, or uh, would that uh, be meaningfully higher? I just wanted uh, your thoughts on that, sir. Uh, I would not want to put a particular figure in mind, but yes, uh, it will be a continuous process. But as I said, lands, uh, we are trying to see how we can get the best uh, best deal in lands today. And we'll continue to keep that thing. But I think close to the figure is what we I could say would be a uh, good estimation. Okay, sure. And uh, so you mentioned, uh, you know, given a detailed uh, project-wise and uh, value-wise uh, breakup in the presentation, uh, can you just help us with, you know, the construction cost for the ongoing projects, spending construction cost for the ongoing projects, and the total construction for cost for the upcoming projects uh, that you have mentioned? Overall pro project cost can be in a range of 600 crores, uh, you know, in the entire ongoing portfolio. Sorry, 600. It is balanced to be completed. 600. 600. So include development and other costs as well. Right, right. In the ongoing projects and in the uh, upcoming? Upcoming, we will, uh, when guide you during the, you know, quarters where sure. we come up with more uh, projects when the plans are for, for the finalized, you know. Got it, got it. No problem. Okay, and sir, just one clarification to the previous question. I think then the line got cut off uh, on the uh, gross debt and high cost debt and the interest cost. You know, what will be the interest cost in FI25 and uh, what is the, uh, what what will be the gross debt reduction uh, in FI25 if we can uh, share that number? So FI25, we expect uh, to maintain the same uh, debt levels considering the seven project launches are there. Mm -hmm. We would require some capital for that. So there will be repayments, there will be disbursements which will be taken. So we'll uh, try to maintain the debt level in for FY25. And the blended average cost can be uh, considering the range of 14% odd. Okay. And for FY25. For FY25. And can this be expected to come down given, uh, you know, uh, our uh, return ratios have slightly become better. So from 14% towards 10%, is there a trajectory that uh, over the next two years that we are targeting and uh, what number uh, would we settle at uh, over two, three years? So we target 12 to 13 percent range, 12 uh, percent uh, range in the next one year. Okay. For okay. FI 26, we can target that. This year, since we will require a lot of capital for the upcoming projects hmm. and land stage pro uh, acquisition uh, money is also taken, hmm. so we can consider 14 percent for this FI 25. Right. And just Sorry, just one last question. Uh, what kind of money we require uh, to launch these seven projects uh, in FI25? So that would be in a range of 150 or crores. Okay, 150 crores to launch these projects. Yes. Okay, sir. Okay, uh, that's it from my side. All the best and thank you, sir. Yes. Thank you, sir. We have our next question from the line of Anand Mundra from My Temple. Capital, please go ahead. Hello. Yeah. Thank you for the opportunity again, sir. What is our uh, plan on the land reserves? We have about seven land reserves. So, are we planning to monetize that, or we want to develop it? And if we want to develop it, then what could be the potential uh, sales area that we could get out of that? So the land reserves would be not be our immediate priority because we already have about 9 lakh square feet apart from that to be launched. Uh, having said that, the land reserves have an inherent value already. So uh, as you can see, it's about 10,000 square meters. So we can estimate a carpet of at least a lakh of square feet, but that would not be coming immediately on the on the table. We, we want to first launch the 9 lakh square feet and then move into that. 
uh, answer what is the nature of these land reserves like are they redevelopment or vacant or slum or what is it uh, it is basically redevelopment some part would be uh, redevelopment some part uh, is the slum yeah okay okay uh, and sir coming back on the um, on the high cost debt point so uh, is there i mean are, are there no other uh, means of funding available to us given that we are now a listed company that uh, we have to keep relying on this 7 to 8, 17 to 18% uh, uh, high cost debt so is, isn't there some other uh, resource means available to us right now given that we are a listed company and our uh, balance sheet is well uh, capitalized quantum the quantum of debt is going to be reduced or gradually because the temporary capital we require for land acquisition and you know once we start the project the cash flow kick, kicks in and that that debt is taken for a shorter tenure so uh, if you st- uh, see other uh, construction finance projects so we are getting 11 12% rate also oh so this is a very short like this is for less than one year is that fair to you yeah one 1.5 year you can consider okay okay uh, and i missed out on the earlier participant had asked that i mean so whatever uh, sale receivables that we have from the current ongoing project are they enough to fund the construction expense that we have on the current ongoing project yes it is enough because the sales receivables are 718 crores against which we have a balance cost to complete of around 600 odd crores but plus there is a unsold inventory uh, which is about 631 crores Okay. Which will take All care right. of the ongoing debt uh, which we have. All right. All right. And the 150 crores of capital that we will need to launch the seven project, for that we will not have to rely on any form of high cost debt. For that we will use our construction finance. Uh, is that a correct assumption? Uh, majorly it will be construction finance, but some portion will be there uh, maybe for the commercial, data commercial lot. We may require some debt, which is maybe 14-15 percent types. These are actually these are mainly for approval costs. Approval related costs, which bank cannot fund. Uh, it is more of TDR oh. and uh, TDR and uh, FSI related costs like additional FSI, which cannot be funded by RBI uh, as per RBI circular. I bank cannot fund those costs. Okay, okay, okay. So, so these costs generally when you lo- launch a project. Uh, after launching that project when can we avail a bank financing after six months one year we maybe one and a half year we can avail bank finance so initial one and a half years either we do it through our internal accruals or we rely on high cost debt yes yes and our sole reliance on high cost debt is nbfc's in case of land acquisition it can be uh, aifs yeah okay okay uh, all right that's it from my end if i have any more questions i'll come back in the queue thank you thank you thank you sir we have our next question from the line of tushar sarda from athena investments please go ahead yeah thank you thank you for the opportunity i was uh, wanting to understand your interest cost because for this quarter also it is 25 crore so annual run rate comes to around 100 crore on 400 crore kind of borrowing, so it's almost 25 percent. If you can just uh, explain uh, what is the actual interest cost. So we recently have taken uh, loans, uh, increase our loans. So because of which uh, the funds have not yet been deployed as on 31st March, which will be deployed in this particular quarter. That's why you're feeling the interest was a little high in quarter four. No, I, I didn't follow. Uh, you have taken loan recently, right? So then the uh, actual at the end of the period, loan amount will be higher. Then the average cost should have been even lower. This is coming to almost 25%. Am I missing something? So we have taken one loan from AIF at 17%, which is 60 crore. We have drawn down from AIF for acquisition of the plot for Mahim. Recently, we acquired the plot at Mahim, uh, which is 1073 square meters land which is expected to have a sales value of 120 crores for which uh, we have availed a high cost debt. So it's putting that particular project. And also my question uh, is your quarterly cost is 25 crores, right? For the Q4 as per your uh, 
presentation on page six, finance cost is 25 crore for Q4. So this comes to annualized 100 crore run rate. And your debt you have reported. Uh, so uh, is around 400 crores, right? So that, that comes to gross debt reported is 426 crores. So this comes to 25% interest cost. So this, uh, there are a few high cost debts which are running as on 31st March, which will be uh, most likely repaid in this particular financial year. So during no, but year, what cost? High cost you are saying 17-18%. I am getting a computation of 25%. What am I missing? So there are processing charges, bank charges and other things also which are allied to but the... They, they can't be so high. Uh, I mean, if you can give the breakup of the 25 crores then. What is processing? What is actual interest cost? Because these numbers don't add up. We'll come back to this around the numbers. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. We have our next question from the line of Ronald Fioni from Share Khan Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, sir, and congratulations on good numbers. Uh, on the previous question on interest cost, also, I had one clarification that. Uh, the interest cost had substantially come down from 47 to 25 during the quarter. So, you know, what had led to this substantial reduction despite, you know, gross debt remaining at, at the same level, as you know, inching up? So, this is because uh, in the, uh, the, the loans were repaid in uh, December 26 after our listing. So the ben the impact of that has been uh, coming in the fourth quarter. That's why the interest costs have reduced from the third quarter to fourth quarter because we have repaid uh, around 300 crore plus debt in quarter three, uh, FY24. Uh, oh, and uh, this 200 crore commercial sale which you are expecting that forms the part of uh, ongoing or upcoming projects? These are upcoming projects, sir. Upcoming, right? So uh, overall, you know, if we expect to 50 to 300 crore from ongoing uh, projects, yearly sales, then uh, you would be expecting more than 50 to 60 percent sales rate in the upcoming project, you know, to meet the 850 crore target. Uh, is it true that such a high sales target you are expecting around 50 to 60 percent to come from upcoming projects? So it's coming from upcoming projects, sir. Uh, 200 of commercial and I would say uh, additional 200 from uh, upcoming. No, no. 850 crore is the target. So 250 uh, would be coming from ongoing. So balance around say um, 600 odd crore would be coming from upcoming. So this is almost 50 percent of the 1150 crore upcoming project. So you are expecting around 50% uh, sales rate from the upcoming project. So uh, just to give clarify, out of 850 crores, uh, 200 is coming from the commercial segment, which is upcoming project. 250 we are expecting from the uh, residential segment in the upcoming segment. And from the on ongoing portfolio, we are targeting 400 crores. Okay, 400 from ongoing. Okay, so that means you would be exhausting the ongoing not by FI29, but much prior to that, in two to three years rather than five years. Yes, so there is only a few projects which are going till 29 because recently that project we have launched at Mahim, Lumina, that is only going till 29. The rest all projects we are targeting to finish in the next two, two and a half years time frame. Okay, great. And lastly, on the, the margin guidance which you are maintaining, so, you know, previously we had a view that uh, it would normalize to uh, 35 or you know, so something of that sort, but uh, now uh, you are maintaining, you know, around 55 or percentage. So what has changed actually? Product mix has changed, so value luxury has and luxury, luxury segment has been sold very well. That the relations are bit bit better than the value luxury segment, and also uh, the two commercial deals which we concluded last year has been come into recognition this year as well. So there also the 
uh, relations are better in those two deals. That that has boosted our EBITDA margins for this particular financial year as compared to last financial year. But uh, that means for FY25, you would be maintaining the margins, or it would be you know uh, FY26 also you can maintain the margins, or it would taper down. Since the land's cost is already funded for, so we 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 propose to maintain the margins. Oh, oh. okay, great. So thank you very much, and all. Thank you, sir. We have our next question from the line of Pradeep Rawat from Yogi Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you for the opportunity. I have one question. So, how is the pricing environment you are seeing for the South Central Mumbai region right now? Sorry, could you just repeat the question? How is the pricing environment you are seeing in the region of South Central Mumbai? So, it depends on the segment we are we are targeting. If it's a value luxury segment, anywhere between uh, it ranges from 38 all the way to 43 to 44,000. And if it's a luxury segment, you know, it can go from 60 all the way to around 85, 90 as well. So it depends on the location, where you are, how close you are to the sea. And uh, and generally value luxury, we see, you know, we're playing with velocity. So we make sure that we, you know, there's not, we keep the price a bit constant. While luxury, we're able to kind of have better realizations. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And best of luck. Thank you, sir. We have our next question from the line of Rajiv Rupani, a shareholder. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. I have a question. Uh, now, our ongoing projects are majorly in Mahim and the other area. And if I see your presentation, you've given that average realization is in the range of 35,000 to 45,000 square feet. And currently in the con call, you have, uh, from the uh, new projects, you have uh, said that you will get average realization of about 50 to 55,000 square feet. So on what uh, basis are you guiding for higher realizations, uh, that more than 20% higher realizations from new projects? So just on a clarification, we have the average realization has gone up to 45,000. So I think uh, there's no 35,000 mentioned uh, anywhere. So 45,000 would be the realization which we have achieved this year compared to last year. And uh, why we've taken a high realization is since Bandra is a very big proposal, the carpet rate in Bandra on Mount Mary Hill will be starting with a lack of square feet. So if you look at it, a blended average, that's why we have given a, uh, you know, a reasonable guidance of 50 to 55. Okay, and I have a follow-up question. Now, our major focus is in Mahim Dazar. So, uh, going forward, I mean, the realization in Bandra, Santa Cruz, and Khar are much higher. So, uh, how many projects could we add going forward in the next two, three years in those areas? Uh, our focus would be... For, have you bid for some projects in Khar, Santa Cruz? No, we haven't bid for anything on car Santa Cruz. We're looking at just acquisition of societies very close to what we already have so that we get a larger footprint. So that would be a prime objective right now. Okay, and I have one more fo uh, follow-up question. Now, sir, in, uh, we are, uh, we are uh, in the Mahim area, so that Navjivan Society in Mahim, uh, did we bid for that project? Uh, could you just guide us? That's gone for redevelopment. Uh, no, we actually didn't bid. I believe that's already gone for redevelopment with Raymond, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. So, uh, one more question. Now, what what I know is that all the big de the big developers like the Purankara who was were who in the south and uh, the Prestige Estates. So, uh, can we bid for like a big project like two three acres uh, project because there is a lot of competition. They are, have also entered this uh, this area, Bandra. Uh, the other and also, uh, how's the competition over there? So the land passes which we are currently already own in Bandra is to the tune of the size which you're which you're already discussing. So I think we already with that objective we are we able to handle that kind of size, and that's where we that's why I said we plan to launch that later this year early next year because the size of the project has increased. Okay, thank you. Thank you. 
We have our next question from the line of Pranav Srimal from Pink Wealth Advisory. Please go ahead. Hello. Yes, Hello? please go ahead with the question. Yeah, uh, sir, you are guiding. We are approximately going to have a season of 850 CR. So that's a profit prospect to selling about 1.8, 1.9 lakhs per feet area. Would that be correct to agree? Uh, sorry, uh, your, is, is the question is not clear. Can you repeat that, please? Yeah, so, so we are targeting 860 CR in details, right? Uh, Pranav, sir, can you please use the head, handset? Your voice is very yeah. muffled. Oh. Yeah. Hello? Am, am I audible? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, now yeah. you're so, audible. Uh, so, we are targeting 850 CR in pre sales. So, that would roughly translate to around 1.9 lakh square feet of area. Would that be correct to assume? Uh, roughly, roughly, it's 2 lakh. So, this year, the new launches, or you're saying overall 850 crores? Overall, 850 crores we're targeting in pre-sales, correct? So yeah. even if we take like a 44, 45,000 realization rate, that would be around 1.9 lakh square feet. Right. So yes. uh, is that correct to assume? Yes. And secondly, so we're also raising 500 CR. Uh, if we could shed some light on that, the purpose of uh, dilution of equity okay. there. Oh, that is just an enabling provision. Uh, we have not planned anything else now, but that's just an enabling provision from the board and uh, which we're taking and which we will take yearly. Okay, so nothing is planned as of now. We're just uh, getting the approvals, not raising in this year. Is that... Uh, sorry to interrupt, plan? sir. Uh, we have the disconnect, uh, management flying disconnected. Please be patient. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for waiting patiently. We have the management back with us. Over to you, sir. Hi, sorry, I think the line got uh, disconnected. Can we continue yeah, with the question? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, so, yeah, just coming back, we are trying to raise around 500 CR. So, is there any particular uh, reason? Like, are we planning to expand? Or what are we trying to do with that fund? So, this is actually just an enabling provision. We haven't really decided okay. to think it's just an enabling provision of the board. As in when we get an opportunity, it's just more of an enabling provision which we will take uh, yearly. Okay, so uh, as of now, we just uh, sort of hold off on that sheet, correct? Sorry, okay. I couldn't hear you. Just unlocking the provision, as of now, we just fix uh, for using this function. Uh, Mr. Kram, we are unable to hear you. Can you move to a better place? Hello, I was on that you. Hello? Oh, uh, yes, sir. Now we can hear you. Please go ahead. Yeah, and uh, also, sir, uh, recently, uh, during the last phone call with Arjun, uh, there was some discussion that you have taken a very high uh, interest loan that was going to be paid off uh, by within 12 months. Yeah, we have taken one loan, uh, NCD uh, from uh, from an AIF, that is for that Mahim land acquisition. So that uh, yeah, so, is only a tenure is five years, but uh, considering the cash flows, you know, we might repay them earlier and refinance with a lower cost rate in a period of 1.5 to 2 years. Okay, got it. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that would be the last question for today. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Rahul Thomas for closing comments. I take this opportunity to thank everyone for joining the call. I hope we have been able to address all your queries.
for any further information, kindly get in touch with us or Strategic Growth Advisors, our Investor Relation Advisors. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. On behalf of Suraj Estate Developers Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.